Everybody, welcome to my channel. Thank you so much for stopping by. I hope you're doing well. Are you enjoying the summertime in the US? I know some of my viewers aren't having summertime, but at least you can dream about it and think about your next vacation. And speaking of vacation, have you made it to the beach yet? I haven't made it just yet, but I'm planning to. And what better way to get prepared than to make beautiful ocean themed necklaces? And that's what we're going to be doing today. We're going to be making two gorgeous necklaces, the ones that you saw in the intro. One of them will have a starfish and the other one will have cowrie shells. I always have trouble pronouncing that word cowrie. But anyway, guys, if you're interested in making those necklaces, you're in the right place and they're super easy to make. It's going to be a very easy tutorial today. Now, one thing I will tell you is that those necklaces aren't water resistant. So don't think you can make them and wear them to the beach because that's not what they're about. They're beach chic necklaces. And what that means is that you're basically wearing something that's elegant, but ocean themed. Now you could modify the designs and use materials that are water resistant. But anyway, we're going to be using the beads that came in the curated bead box for the month of July. And if you're not familiar with that box, I'll leave a link down below with a little bit of information. I'm also going to leave a list of all the materials that I'm going to be using today, as well as the tools. And if you follow my channel, you know that I always leave timestamps in case you want to skip forward to any portion of the video. And don't forget that I always model my pieces at the end of the tutorial. So stick around for that. And one more thing, guys, if you're new and you think you might like my content, please think about subscribing to my channel because it really does help my channel and it helps me to stay motivated to create more videos for you. Plus, you're going to get some really nice content. I'm approaching 20,000 subscribers, so I'm so excited about that and so grateful. I'm almost there. I think I need another 40 before I reach 20,000. So if you could follow this channel, I'd really appreciate it. I feel so lucky and so blessed to be on this platform because I've gained a lot of friends, a lot of virtual friends. And I also feel like we've built a community here and I really love that. And as a thank you, I'd like to do a drawing and give out some gifts. I'm going to do a little giveaway and draw three names and give out three gifts. And the gifts are going to be the magic rods and they're going to be the 12 inch rods. So if you'd like to participate in the giveaway, all you have to do is leave a comment down below in today's video. And then in the next one, I'll do the drawing and we'll see who the winners are. And if you want to win, you have to be a subscriber. That's the rule. I'm going to be checking that when I draw the names. So anyway, guys, I'm very excited about today's tutorial. I can't wait to show you how to make those two necklaces. So let's go ahead, turn the camera around and we'll get started. And here we have created bee box for the month of July. The name of this collection is Seabed Secrets. Let's go ahead and select the beads. I want to definitely use these shells, these carry shells. They're a little bit on the big side, so I'm not going to use too many of them, but I definitely want to use them for the choker necklace. I also want to use this pendant. It measures 60 by 46 millimeters. I think it's adorable and I love the open design. And I also like that it has a nice big loop. I'll be using a couple of these beads here. These are called seashell beads and they measure 22 by 16 millimeters. I want to use the beads from this strand. I really love the finish of these beads. These are called marble star glass beads and the color is jungle and these measure six millimeters in size. And I want to use some beads from this strand as well. These are eight millimeters in size and these are also marble star glass beads and the color is red slash brown. And I'll be using some items from the Finding Starters Kit. I'll probably use the jump rings and the lobster clasp. And that's it from this box. I'm going to be using some leather cord today. And the reason I want to use leather cord is because of the carry shells. You could use nylon cord if you wanted to, but I think the leather cord is going to work better for the project today. But anyway, both of these are in a metallic brown color. The color is actually called Cancer, but this one's one millimeter thick and this one's 0.5 millimeters thick. Of course, you could use any color you want. This design would actually work better with a silver or even a white colored leather cord. I'll be using some seed beads and these are size 80 and the color is turquoise. I'm going to use them to create a little bit of space between my beads and the pendant and I'm only going to need a few of them. I'll be using some metal spacer beads and these actually have pretty large holes. 
The one millimeter leather cord will definitely fit through those holes. So when you get your spacer beads, make sure they have large holes like these. Let me show you what they look like. They're pretty common and you can find them pretty much anywhere. I actually got these on Amazon. We're going to be using some slider beads and these measure six millimeters in diameter. They have a silicone center. I'm going to be using these instead of creating sliding knots and I'll show you how to use them later on. Let me give you a close up. As you can see, there's some silicone in the center, which means you can thread two pieces of leather cord through that. And then you can slide this bead up and down to lengthen or shorten your necklace. And I got these on Amazon as well. They came in different sizes, as you can see, and in two colors, silver and gold. I'm also going to be using a couple of pieces of craft wire, and this is 22 gauge craft wire. We're going to use this to create our own cord end tips. And I think that's about it. So now that we've gone over the materials, let's go ahead and get started. We're going to start by making the choker necklace. And by the way, guys, if you want to make something that's longer than a choker length, you can certainly do that. I'm going to make mine about 16 inches long, and I'm only going to use five of these shells. As you can see, they vary in size. I'm going to choose the ones that are the smallest. So let me do that now. So these are the five that I'm going to use. And if you'll notice, each shell has a skinny side and a fat side. I'm going to have mine with a fat side on the bottom. Let me show you something like that, but I encourage you to play around and see what looks good to you. You could have them alternating. For example, you could have this one with a fat side on the bottom and the next one with a fat side on the top. Something like that. I've tried doing it like that and I don't really like how it feels. I prefer having the fat side on the bottom, but it's up to you how you want to do it. I'm going to be placing the eight millimeter size beads in between these shells. So it's going to look something like this. So now let me get the leather cord. Here's my leather cord. This is the 0.5 millimeter leather cord. And I've cut myself two 24 inch pieces. It's probably more than what I need, but I'd rather have a little bit extra than not enough. And once I thread on these shells and beads, I'll decide exactly how long I want my necklace. So we're going to start by bringing the ends together. Like this. And now I'm going to measure eight inches. So here's my eight inch point and I'm going to form a knot. It's going to be a basic knot, just a regular overhand knot. Just like that. And now I'm going to trim my ends. I'm going to make them slightly pointed so it's easier to thread them through the beads. Just like that. We're going to start by loading one of these eight millimeter size beads. And I chose these because these actually have big holes. You're going to have to make sure your beads have holes that are big enough to accommodate two pieces of leather. So now I'm just going to slide it down. And there's my first bead. And now we're going to load our first shell. So I'm going to take one piece of leather cord and go through the front like this. And I'm going to take the other piece of leather cord and go through the back. Just like that. And now we need to slide it down to where the other bead is. Let me just move my beads up. So this is what you should have. Now the key to making this necklace is to make sure that your shells and your beads are up against each other real snugly. We're not going to make a knot and that's the reason why. We're just going to thread them on like this and then we're going to create another knot when we get done loading all the beads and shells. So once again, I'm going to bring my ends together and thread on a bead. I'm 
I'm bringing it down. Now here's an important tip. When you go to thread on a shell, you have to make sure that you thread the correct cord through the front. Let me show you what I mean. This one here is the one that's coming from the back of the shell. So we want to keep this one in the back of the next shell. And this one here is coming from the front of the shell. And this is the one that's going to be threaded through the front of the next shell. I hope that makes sense. Let me just show you. This is the one that's going through the front. And now I'm going to thread the one that's going through the back. I just think that if you do it like that, they'll sit better. The other thing you want to make sure you do is to keep the leather within that little groove there. Can you guys see that? That's where the leather cord should sit. And the other thing you want to do is to keep that eight millimeter bead centered between those two shells. In other words, you don't want it to be too far forward like this or too far back. You want it centered. I hope I'm being clear and making sense. So now I'm going to bring my ends together again and thread on the next bead. Slide it down. Let me figure out which leather cord is in the front. This one's actually in the back, so this one's in the front. Let me thread this one through the back. And bring it down. Let me straighten this one out. It's pretty straightforward, nothing complicated about this. So let me speed up the film and I'll thread the rest of these. As you can see, all the beads and shells are on the leather cord now. One thing I do want to mention, you may come across a bead that has a hole that's a little bit smaller than the others. That happens from time to time. You're just going to have to go through your strand and see which ones have larger holes. You only need six beads for this necklace, so you shouldn't have any trouble finding those six beads. Another thing you might want to try is to go in from the other end of the bead. Sometimes the holes on these beads are larger on one side compared to the other side. So now we just have to knot off this end. And that part's easy. It's going to be a simple overhand knot. And this leather cord is very curly. And again, you want to make sure that knot is up against those beads real snug. So I'm just going to slide it down as close to that bead as I can. That looks pretty good. So now we're going to create some cord end tips to finish it off. But before I do, I'm going to take this to the mirror and hold it up to my chest and see what length I want. So let me do that and I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back and I've decided that I'm going to give myself about four and a half inches at each end. This piece measures six inches, which means I'm going to need an additional 10 inches, five inches at each end. But since the clasp and the jump rings are going to measure one inch, I really only need four and a half inches at each end. But again, it's up to you. It all depends on how long you want your choker necklace, or even if you want the choker length. You might decide you might want something a little bit longer. So let me go ahead and measure it out. And I think I'm going to make mine a little bit shorter. I'm going to make mine four and a quarter. Let me measure this end now. I 
I have a piece of wire and this is my 22 gauge wire. I make my cord end tips a little bit different than most people. I've always had trouble using my fingers to do wraps on leather cord. So I came up with a method that works for me. Of course, you can use your own method. I'm gonna grab the bottom of the wire like this at about an inch or so, maybe a little bit less from the bottom. Kink it. Switch to the long part of the wire. Take the tail, wrap it around the nose of my pliers, flip the pliers around, continue to wrap to the back. And this is what you should have. And now I'm going to bring my ends together like this. Let me do it this way, actually. So I have my loop on the left and I have the short tail on the right. I'm going to take my ends and I'm going to thread them through that loop like this. Just like that. And now let me slide the leather cord down a little bit. So this is what you should have. I'm gonna grab the loop and the leather cord with these pliers. These are actually crimping pliers, but I like using these because they have a skinny tip and they grab really well. And now with these pliers, I'm gonna grab the tail and I'm gonna do my wraps right over the leather cord and the wire. You wanna to try to make nice, neat wraps. And it's up to you how many wraps you wanna do. I think the more wraps you have, the more secure it's gonna be. Now, before I go any further, I'm gonna trim off that wire. I'm using my flush cutters. Make sure you don't cut your leather cord. And now I'm gonna continue doing my wraps right over the end of that wire. You definitely wanna cover it up. But you don't wanna to go too far on the leather. I think that's good enough. So this is what it looks like. And now I need to cut off the excess. And now I'm gonna tuck that little tail in, that little sharp tail. You wanna make sure you tuck it in because you don't want anything sharp sticking out. It's a good idea to run your finger on it to make sure it's not sharp. And now I'm gonna slide the leather cord out of this loop again. and trim it off. Let me clean it up a little bit. Make sure you don't cut your wire when you do this. Let me straighten out my loop. And that's all there is to it. Pretty simple. There's the back of it. I think it's a really nice way to finish a necklace. And it's very secure as well. So now to save time, I'm gonna do the other end off camera and I'll be right back. Here's my cute little choker necklace. As you can see, I finished both ends. And by the way, guys, this method actually works with nylon cord as well. I've tested it many times and it's very secure. It doesn't come off and you don't need glue. So now we just need to attach the clasp. Here's a clasp and two six millimeter jump rings. Let me open up this jump ring. And by the way, these are from the Finding Starter Kit. This is the right side of the necklace. So I'm gonna attach the clasp to this side. You attach it to the dominant side, whichever the dominant side is for you. So if you're right-handed, you attach it on the right-hand side. Let me open up this one. Okay. 
I think this is a very easy necklace to make and it looks super cute. So now we're going to move on to the longer necklace. Let me get the materials for that. Here are the materials for the second necklace. I have two of the metal shell beads. I have the 8mm and the 6mm marble star glass beads. I have these metal spacer beads or disc beads. I have six size 80 seed beads. This is the 1mm leather cord and this piece measures 40 inches. I would recommend that you cut yourself a little bit extra because we're going to be doing a barrel knot by the pendant and some additional knots at the ends. So you want to make sure you have enough leather cord for that. And I also have my starfish pendant. We're going to start by attaching the pendant to the leather cord and I'm going to do it by creating a barrel knot. And for my barrel knots, I usually use some kind of a tube, either a straw or a metal tube bead. I like to use a straw and I actually got this at a coffee shop. It's a little bit thinner than your average straw. So let me show you how to do this. I'm going to slide the leather cord through the loop of this pendant. Bring it to the center. And I actually want one of my ends to be a little bit longer than the other one, about two inches or so longer. The longer piece should be on the top like this. So this is my longer piece. I'm going to take my straw and place it right on top like this. And I'm going to take this longer piece and go behind and wrap it around the straw about three times or so. You can do more if you want to. Let me do four. Let me just go ahead and do four. And now this part's very important. You need to hold onto your wraps with your index finger and your thumb like this. Take your end and thread it through the straw. I'm going to switch hands now. Pull it through. And now while holding onto my wraps like this, I'm going to slide the straw off. And I'm going to slide that knot down so that it's close to the pendant. So what you want to do is you want to pull on this end like this. I like to roll my knot between my index finger and my thumb to make it nice and round. And just keep tightening it until you're satisfied. I usually pull both ends and that's all there is to it. Pretty simple. And you really don't need any glue on that knot because once we load the beads and tie a knot at the other end, it'll pretty much stay like that. As you can see, I've already snipped off my ends, so it's pointed. Let me check the other end. I need to do that one. So now I'm going to load some seed beads and I'm going to load three of them. Let me bring them down. You want them all the way to the bottom like this. And the reason I'm adding these seed beads here is to create a little bit of space because the next bead is going to be a six millimeter size bead. One of these. And now metal spacer bead. One of the eight millimeter size beads. Another spacer bead. Another six millimeter size bead. Let me just keep loading these until I'm happy with the length and then I'll show you. As you can see, I've loaded the beads that I want. Let me show you what I did. We started with three size 80 C beads, and then a six millimeter bead, and then a metal spacer bead, and then an eight millimeter size bead. And I repeated the same pattern until I loaded four of the eight millimeters and five of the six millimeters. I also started and ended with a six millimeter bead, and I added this shell bead. And I don't know why they call them shell beads, because they look like spiral beads to me, but whatever. 
By the way, guys, these beads actually have irregular holes as well. So you may have to use a bead reamer. And if you've never used one, don't be intimidated because they're very easy to use. You can either use a battery powered one or a manual one like this one that I have. And you simply insert it into the bead and turn it like this until you widen the hole. It's very easy to do. And then after you do that, you should be able to fit your leather cord through it. Just like that. But not all of them have small holes. I actually didn't have to do anything to these two. I was able to slide the leather cord through them with no problem. So now we're going to knot this off and it's going to be a simple knot. Just an overhand knot. You want to slide it down so that it's close to that metal bead. Just like that. And that's all there is to it. Very, very easy. So now to save time, I'm going to do the other side off camera and I'll be right back. Well, here's my pretty starfish necklace. And I absolutely love these colors. I think they're so beautiful. As you can see, I knotted both ends and I did trim off my leather. So each length measures 18 inches total. Now we are going to be creating another knot at the very end. So the necklace will be a little bit shorter than 36 inches. Obviously, you're going to have to decide how long you want your necklace to be. It's completely up to you how you want to wear it. So now we just need to slide on the slider beads. And here they are. And by the way, guys, you want to make sure you get slider beads that have the proper size hole. You don't want the hole to be too big, but you don't want it to be too small either because you want to be able to fit that leather cord through it. And we're actually going to fit two pieces of leather cord through each one. Let me show you. I'm going to start out by sliding one on each end. Let me slide the other one on. So now I have both beads on. And now I'm going to take this end and slide it through the slider bead in the opposite direction. Let me just pull the leather cord down. That helps a little bit because it opens up that silicone hole. And now I'm going to slide this one through the other one in the opposite direction again. And that's all there is to it. Very easy, much easier than doing barrel knots or any kind of sliding knot. And now we're just going to do a knot at this end. Just a regular overhand knot. Let me trim off a little bit of it. And now we're going to do another knot at this end. Let me just make sure they're the same length. And it looks like they are. So let me show you how this works. You pull on these slider beads. Just like that. And now we have a nice short necklace and then to lengthen it, you slide them back up. Very simple concept and it looks very nice. Now one thing I do want to do is add a little bit of glue to that. I like to use GS Hypo Cement Glue. And I'm going to apply it directly on the knot and you don't really need a lot. You just apply a very tiny amount. Let me put some on this side. Let me do this knot now. Let me 
short my necklace. And here's the other one. Tell me these are not adorable. I think they coordinate really beautifully. And like I always say, I like to have the option of wearing one or the other or both. So anyway, guys, as usual, I'd like to go ahead and put these on and show you what they look like. So let me do that and I'll see you in a few moments. Well, what do you think? Aren't these cute? I think they're very cute, but they're also very elegant. They're the perfect thing to wear out to dinner after a long day at the beach. And you can either dress it up or dress it down depending on whether you wear the, the shell necklace or the starfish necklace or both. So anyway, guys, I hope I've inspired you. I hope you can make your own necklaces. Let me know what you think about them. Please leave some comments down below if you have some time. Thank you so much for watching. I'm looking forward to seeing you again. Have a great day and I'll see you next time. Bye. I see oceans inside